What's up, everybody? Gavin the Chef Cook <laughs> with Radio Rich G. You know, okay, so I'm from the old school thing of broadcasting. We don't say what's up to everybody. You talk to one person. Uh, say, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. <laughs> As a listener, I thank you for asking. <laughs> I just get excited, but it's a you. But you're the YouTube generation. Yeah, I like to. I like to think that I already have a multitude of fans. Yeah, what's up, YouTube? Yeah, smash that subscribe button. Yeah, I'm not that guy. Though. Like for more content. Yeah, that's more of a. Jordan Don't forget Anderson. my Patreon. <laughs> that's more of a Jordan Anderson thing. He's yeah. more like the smash that subscribe button. <laughs> oh God! All right, so what are we talking about today, Gav? You're we're rolling. On this, like, mini shut-ins, we're going to be discussing Stranger Things Season 4. Yeah, it's good. And I think we've given it, it's, it's been over the weekend, just about everyone has watched it, so... I think, yeah, I think most people have probably seen it by yeah. now. If it's something that's like this, that, like, comes out all at once, you don't have to really be right. careful of spoilers like that, because right. most people binge it anyways. But yeah, there's, like, basically four hours of content. Yeah. And I'll also... I'll slap a spoiler warning right here, right yeah, now. Yeah, it's right definitely across spoilers for sure. Yeah. If you haven't watched any Stranger Things. Definitely. This is basically, I mean, we're talking about all of season four. Yeah. So, I mean, basically just the last two episodes. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it yet, uh, any of it, which this is mainly just about the last two episodes, since that's like where all the big things happened. Yeah. We'll probably, you know, include parts of it. But if you haven't seen it yet, come back later. Come back. But, so initially... With how it how volume one like kind of left things, what were your thoughts? That all I wanted was the gang to get back together. Mm-hmm. I just I needed the gang to get back together. Yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed like the different storylines mm-hmm. because I think like they were necessary. But at heart, this show is the crew, right? Yeah, coming together, getting things done, and that's what I missed all of like basically volume one. Yeah, and I thought it was. Like you said, I really liked it, but I personally think they took too long to get everyone together. Yeah, I agree. Because, like, I understand, like, L needed or needed to be put in the tank and stuff at Nina. Yeah. But, I don't know, I still feel like part of it was, like, prolonged for no reason. The, the, and Joyce and Murray getting to Russia is so unexplained to me yes uh but also like the, i mean the, the whole show is based on like magic and, mm-hmm. and and demons and stuff like that so if that's the one thing you're gonna question that's ridiculous but yeah. like it also was quite the rescue quite the escape oh yeah and it was just like what for like you said for a show that's like magic and monsters and demons and stuff somehow they still kept that like it's Hard to, like, grasp how, like, quickly they got to it. Yeah. But still also at the same time, like, that's, like, the most realistic thing that happens in the show is the fact that, (laughs) I know like, out of all the the things that could go wrong do go wrong when they get to Russia, and that's the funniest part. Well, so it's very, have you seen the movie Stripes? Yeah. It was a very Stripes-esque rescue, right? Yeah. Uh, And so, I again, I think they're playing into, like, the pop culture of, Mm -hmm. like, the 80s and stuff. And so I don't know if that was... If that was on purpose, but that's what I felt. It was just it a very be. Bill Murray, Harold Ramis type yeah. of like rescue. You know what I mean? Uh, so um, at the end of volume one, instantly I was like, oh, Nancy's dead. I that's thought, all? I thought it was over for her. Well, because like you never hear like what's her favorite song or anything like that throughout the whole series at all. Yeah. And so I was just like, ah, it's over. But then like as soon as it kicks in and you realize that, Vecna was literally just showing like what his plan was because mm-hmm. he at that point he was like I'm unstoppable. Yeah, I literally was just like, oh, that makes a lot more sense than just killing Nancy randomly. But I don't know. I was I really liked Volume One and like I was really pulled in. But right there at the end, I was really concerned that Volume Two was gonna just be a dud because mm-hmm. I was like, you can't. I was like, it's gonna suck spacing off two episodes like two weeks away or almost a month away from the original, you know? And so part of me was just, like, worried going into it, but I think it paid off well because it kept the suspense up, and then it also picked up right where it left off, so you didn't really need the recap. No. And so that was the cool part. Um, and they really just, they, they they glanced over the Nancy thing. It was just like, 
it's taken care of. Yeah, they're like, day. remember, but also it's not <laughs> it's, a deal it's anymore. Yeah, it's, it was no big deal. Well, because I saw like these TikToks and stuff and they were like theories like, well, it's going to be Africa by Toto that saves her because that's what Steve played when they went on their first date. Oh, my God. I never I even like, thought. I didn't even care. Like, I was just like, nothing's going to happen. If anybody's yeah. going to go, it's, it's you know, Max is going to be the one that has to deal with Vecna face to face. And real, like, real consequences, right? Yeah. And so, and so I was never nervous for Nancy. At exactly. All. Well, part of me is just like, ah, she's dead. Like, if, if she's dead, she's dead. If she's not, she's not. It's either, you know, like, I... I like Nancy as a character, yeah. But also, nothing was really like holding on to me emotionally with her, because she's a great character. But like, other than the fact that she has guns now, do you think that if Steve had had that conversation with Nancy before, like the second part, like Volume Two or whatever, uh, there would have been more of an emotional connection? Probably because I mean, Steve kind of like let it out yeah. there, right? Yeah, got a little could, weird with like, yeah. oh, six kids. It's like that's yeah. way too many, bro. Because you could see, well, because they made it very obvious that Steve like still was hung up on her. Yeah, and that's why he is the way he is right now in this seat. Yeah, and, like in time, but she's just like Jonathan, 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 and so me, I'm just like ah, like it'd be more emotional if like Steve had gotten like lifted by Vecna, and then that's when Nancy was like, oh, I think I still like him. Yeah. And, but, uh, speaking of, uh, Max, let's just dive into like the, basically the biggest part of the, both episodes, fighting Vecna. Yeah. And what we, it's pretty, it was pretty bleak. When they, when they laid out the plan, what did you think? I mean, you knew that wasn't going to work. Yeah. Cause part of me was like, this is either going to go horrendously wrong or it's going to look like it's going to work. And then at the last minute, the everything plan is fun in theory, right? Everybody's excited. They have their hopes are everybody's hopeful. Mm-hmm. And so in that moment in time, you're hopeful, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, great. This is the plan. Uh, they'll figure something out. And it just it just made too much sense to like, oh, well, we'll wait for Vecna to go in his trance. We know he's in the in the upside down in this house, and that's where he's getting his powers. And we'll go in there, we'll throw we'll throw a flamethrower on or whatever, and we'll get this stuff, or like I said, Molotov cocktails, right? Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, I guess that makes all the sense in the world. And I'm like, that dude's got a little more power than that. Like it's it's gonna take some more yeah. like actual firepower. I don't care how loud Eddie plays Master Puppets. Yeah. It's just something's going to go wrong. Which that was so sick. I So <laughs> when they first put up the little trailer for Volume 2, that everyone on TikTok, that was their biggest like theory video was like, what is Eddie playing? Yeah. And I was like, well, I mean, look at how he's dressed. It's going to be like Metallica it's gonna be or a something rock like song, that. Right. Yeah. I, and I didn't catch it. I didn't really see many too, too many like TikToks or anything like that about like the theory of what Eddie's playing, uh, other than like somebody said, like the final countdown yeah. or something like that really made no sense to me. Hokey like that, because like for someone that's like all blah, metal and whatnot, yeah, like he's, he's not gonna playing, be playing. Final yeah, I, Metallica made the most sense. And when he started, I was like, this has got to be Master of Puppets. Yeah, like, that's mm-hmm. because Enter Sandman hadn't come out yet. So it's yeah. like, and Master of Puppets is probably like yeah. one of the more famous songs that like are during that era. And if you look at the timeline of it, I saw a video where these dudes were explaining it. Eddie is a guitar god because Master of Puppets had to have only come out five months before they were. So he's fighting. literally just sitting in his house selling like drugs and learning uh, learning Metallica. Metallica, which he has to be guitar god because they didn't have but the internet or anything like that. And he's like also that. a dungeon master. Yeah. He's RIP, my boy. Everybody loved Eddie. I, I liked Eddie a lot because at first I was like, he's weird. I thought he, it was more sad when Bob died. Yeah. Well, no one likes to see Sean Astin die in anything. That's our boy. <laughs> he is Indiana's favorite son. I don't he know really why. is. Uh, no, I mean, Eddie dying, I mean, it was sad. But it was, yeah, it was sad, but I wasn't as crushed as, like, other people have been about it. People were, like, we were, I, don't, I can't remember where I was, but people had asked, like, oh, my God, did you cry at the finale? I'm like, what? No. The only thing that, the only thing that, like, got me was Max. Yeah. Because, like, that was more so, like, just emotionally... It wasn't even like, oh, she's dead. It was more just like, dang, they were this close. That was, I think, the most emotional part of that season was when Lucas was fighting that, I can't remember his name, the kid who... The, Dude from Riverdale? Yeah. The, <laughs> He's the most Riverdale character in the world. Uh, I did not like him at all. And so I'm like, dude, you're, like, you're literally messing this whole thing up right now and uh, get out of here. He wouldn't even like talk to Lucas about it either. But also, you're blind rage anyway. Like, there yeah. so many things that's happened. Like, 
to him. Like, he took that so personal, right? He should have talked to his parents first so they what? could be like, hey, it's just a high school a love. Yeah. Like, that's not the love of your life, man. But I know it's when sad. When you're but... 16, 17 years old, 18, whatever, I mean, that's, that's life's tough, man. Well, now he's dead. So. <laughs> Literally, he's just Get, half of it. I was so happy when that happened. Like, I, oh, yeah. That was, I like, usually, the most satisfying death I've ever like, seen. Because I, I know he was, like, a doucher, but also, like, he wasn't, like, evil, per se. He was just a dude who was caught in a blind rage. He was hard to root for. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, you understood why he was doing it, but yeah. at the same he got caught up in a lot of, like, the, uh, uh, you know, media talk and, you mm-hmm. know, back then, like, satanic cults and stuff like that. Almost yeah. similar to, like, what's going on now with, like, QAnon and, and yeah. like, all those conspiracy theories. People just jump into it and don't really think of anything else. Yeah. That was one of my favorite parts, though, is, like, after the whole town got, like, split into four, mm-hmm. like, you heard the newscast and the dude was saying, like, Eddie Munson, everyone thinks that because of a satanic ritual, that's what happened to our town. Right. And, like, that part was so cool because, I mean, you know, you got stuff, you had stuff like that in the 80s. You had, like, Y2K, all these, like, huge conspiracies that people latch on to. Like, um, oh, man, what was it? There was one thing not even that long ago. Oh, like when they were saying that they put fluoride in the water, and oh. that's how the government was controlling us. And so it's cool seeing media, like, make fun of news media. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah it's, it's easy. It's easy. Low, uh, low picking fruit. Speaking of which, I mean, I watched all the boys. I'm all caught up on the boys. Oh now. yeah. Uh, and that's the same thing as a political commentary on yeah. that with like home. Wait, you're stuff. like all the way all caught the up? way caught up. You're waiting for the finale this week. Yeah. Oh, that's so all dope. the way caught up. That's I know so this dope. is not the, this is not the podcast for that, but I want you to know that I, I accepted well, your challenge and I made it all the yeah. way through. Well, both are simultaneously going on. So it's yeah. okay to talk about both of them. Yeah. Um, you know, what's funny though is, uh, ah, I forgot his name in Stranger Things. Um, not Dr. Brenner, the other one, the nice one. Paul Reiser's character. Yeah. 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 He's also in the boys at the same time. Oh yeah, he is. He and is. He's he t- legend, right? Or, yeah. Yeah. He's really the superstar of pretty much media right now because yeah. he's in two of the biggest shows of the year. Right. And that's so cool. And it's like completely like opposite roles. Like, oh yeah. One like character one the is doctor awful. in Stranger Things is like very like I don't want to say he's wholesome because he's, I mean, he's still a you know mm-hmm. a weird jerk doctor. But, but he like, actually like cares about Yeah, he cares about Elle and, and everything. Yeah. But like in the in the boys, like him and uh, I guess this is a spoiler on the boys, but you know he's basically kind of like a a guide for uh, what's his face, uh, not Homelander, but the uh, Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which you know, I mean, that's not really a spoiler, but like his thing is like he's the producer for all this, you know, like right. he made Soldier Boy who he was, and so like even though he's not a fan of Soldier Boy anymore, like that's that's one of the funniest parts is even though he unintentionally created a monster and got rich from it, he was just like. I really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and he's more <laughs> but, worried. Yeah. He was more worried about the content that was made rather than right. the monster he made. Yeah. That's the funniest part. Yeah. So anyway, back to Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess overall I was cool with it. And I, you, you mentioned, so you want to talk about conspiracy, like we're not conspiracy, but like theories on what happens next. Yeah. Like, or yeah, not even like theories, but just like what can happen next, you know, because Millie Bobby Brown herself now has already like, I wouldn't say like, st- trash but like has already said that like the Duffer brothers need to figure something out because not killing off like main characters is what really is holding the show back and which sucks because you know no one ever wants to see like the main cast die but we're in an era right now where anyone can die at any time and anything you watch yeah and they've sort of fallen this trap where they kill off like a likable character each season yeah right like they brought in Billy in season two yeah and then killed him I thought it would have been cooler if he stuck around. Like, what happens after you, like... There's what? no redemption arc for Billy, period. He's a racist POS. Like, yeah. There's no... I mean, so him dying wasn't that... Big. I understand where you... But he was yeah. like, there's no redemption arc for him. Yeah. He's not going to just, like, flip a switch and be like, oh, Luke is welcome to the family, right? Like, well, I wasn't thinking that. To me, it was more like seeing, like... It would be, like, its own, like, little side story for what would have been season four. And I guess you could have seen, it's like... like what are the like, effects after what happened to him? Sure. And Max, like, there's a connection. Because, but that also has to play in a way Max was able to be, I guess, controlled by Vecna was sort of, like, yeah. through, uh, you know, yeah. those channels, whatever. So. Still, even then, the, like, I don't know, main characters. Like, I'm glad they didn't kill off Robin. I'm glad they didn't kill at least her off because she's a great addition. Steve or Jonathan have to die. Sadly, yes, but also, I hate to do it, but Jonathan. 
if I had to choose Jonathan, go. I feel like we're in a Twilight situation where it's like Team Jacob or Team Edward, right? But, yeah. So I think the most impact, obviously, if Steve dies. Yeah. Like that. That's why I said Jonathan is just because Steve is literally the best character in the whole show. Steve dies. Because he's like the most relatable, you know? Yeah, Steve's dead. Yeah. Rest Steve dead. Steady. I mean, you can put it, you can put me down right now. 100% Steve dies. You know what would be nuts? I think even Eleven's going to die. Yeah, I can see that. The end of it all. And, and I'm okay with that, too. Mm-hmm. I think that I think if you keep my boy Dustin alive, mm-hmm. I think Mike and uh, Will live. I think uh, Lucas lives. Max probably lives, but I mean she's blind. There's and no reason fully for her crippled to live. right now. Yeah, I don't think she should have lived because giving Elle an extra superpower, being she can just reach into someone's mind and bring them back to life or whatever, that's gonna if that's something that she can actually do all the time then that's going to be so overused. Like, what happens if Mike dies and she has been practicing this new power? She's just going to pull him back and, like, everything's fine? Maybe. And that's that's awful. Like, that's just another cushion for them to keep all their but main characters But if he dies alive. in the upside down, does her powers work there? I don't know. I mean, like, the actual, like, yeah. physical version of the upside down. Yeah, I know what you mean. But, um, yeah, I don't think Max should have stayed alive. I think it would have been more impactful had she died. It would give Lucas something more than a bed to stare at. He would have been... Well, because, like, that was, like, the main thing this season for him. His arc was trying to fit in and be a cool kid now. And yeah. so I think that would make him, like, realize that his friends are more important than his popularity. Yeah. And so that's important. Um, I think... Yeah, I think it'd be down to, like, Steve or Dustin. I think there's going to be, like... Because they're always together. Mm-hmm. I think there's going to be a point where one of them is trying to save the other. And I, I think you're going to find a situation where Nancy has to make a choice. And that's why I'm thinking one of those two, like Jonathan or uh, Steve died. Yeah. And I, th- which, yeah. Because Nancy's character, it's not in her to cheat, right? Mm-hmm. So she can't just make out or hook up with or leave uh, Jonathan for Steve. It's just, yeah. That's just not that we haven't seen that kind of character from her. Now, Jonathan could go out and just like break up with her because, uh, he maybe recognizes that Nancy still likes Steve, but still one of them dies. Yeah. Based on a choice that Nancy has to make. Mm -hmm. So whether in the upside down or something and Beckman's like choose, right. And she can make the decision and he makes the decision for, her, and then somebody dies because Vector knows which one she really likes. And she really likes Steve. Yeah. And that's another interesting thing was like, with how they treat main characters, which I'm glad that they didn't like kill off Hopper because I think it made a cool storyline out of it and it made a little bit more sense. But then also at the same time, what now? Like he's out of Russia and he's back. Like usually it's only the kids that fight all this crap. So like, what's he going to do? Hang out, retire. He's Mary Joyce. Mar- yeah. Mary Joyce. Murray's the best man. Yeah. I need more karate out of him. And more karate, and he can speak Russian all day. I want to see him fight Vecna speaking in Russian using only karate. Also, <laughs> did you ever watch Game of Thrones? I'm like four episodes into season one. Oh, uh, and it's too bad because so the guy who helped them escape Russia, right? I don't even know his name in the in Stranger Things. I can't remember him. Uh, the one that was a guard? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's in Game of Thrones as uh, Jack and Hagar. And so oh. that's how we're, and he speaks exactly the same. And so, like, that's all. I can't get that out of my head. It's like, I forgot his name in the show, too. But the actual actor, he's from Russia. Yeah. Like, he's a Russian actor. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, man. I can't even think. Like, there's so much that they can do. And but you see, here's the thing. You don't, you don't have to kill somebody. Like, I'm not. People are always like, you have to kill somebody. And I read a headline today, and it was a quote from somebody that said, you know, this is Hawkins, not Westeros. Yeah. So, like, you don't have to kill people just to kill them. Yeah. My thing was, like, you don't have to kill anyone. But there has to be some sort of, like, emotional they need to damage put, here. Yeah, they need to put something that's actually at stake. Yeah. Because, like, by the end of Volume 2, I mean, technically, that's exactly how it was supposed to go to begin with, was Vecna opens up the portals, and then, boom, you're here. Yeah. Where we are right now. And so, like, there needs to be more at stake than if we fail, it's not that bad. So we're going to try our hardest, and if we mess up, we'll just regroup and come back later. So another thing is there also apparently uh, 
spinoffs are already in like discussions for Stranger Things. Yeah, Stranger Things oh, spinoffs, my. right? But they they would be like not like the main show. It'd be yeah. like some sort of like whether it be like you know like a prequel to uh, Hopper or something. I mean, I don't I don't know. No, no, yeah. nothing's really. Set Which in that stone, would be but. cool. Like my only thing is. That would be really cool, but like if they did any sort of prequel for Stranger Things, I don't think it'll get that much attention because they're gonna have to make if it's Hopper, it's literally just gonna be like a training day scenario where it's a young cop. There will be no magic or demons or monsters because season one is when the first of all that stuff happens right. to them. And so I don't know. I feel like it'd be cool if they like had a spin-off that was really, like, deep diving into more, like, the monster stuff that, like, happens in other places. Because, like, I know technically Eleven created this this whole thing, Mm -hmm. but also, well, Eleven just opened the door, and then, you know, Vecna did all the stuff and whatnot. So it'd be cool if it's, like, there's something like this that happened somewhere else. And so the only difference would be no one would have, like, superpowers. Yeah. And so, I don't know. Spinoffs are, like, weird to really, like, land. Some spinoffs really, really work, and some just... Yeah, I mean, look at Better Call Saul. I mean, it got brought... So good. I think that's better than Breaking Bad. Parts of it, yeah. I think parts of it are, and then parts of it also, it's still Breaking Bad. But also, I have not seen the last season yet, so... Uh, But up until now, like, that episode where... I don't know if you've watched it or not, but up until the episode... The episode where they're in the desert, right? Mm-hmm. They're crawling back. Like, that was just masterpiece, dude. Like, yeah. Crazy good. Plus, that actor is phenomenal, too. Yeah, Bob Odenkirk's great. Yeah, he's awesome. I haven't even seen that movie. He just did that random action flick that looks and like And it's it. so funny, because, like, my intro to Bob Odenkirk is, like, Mr. Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, like, campy comedy stuff. Uh, and now he's, like, doing, like, super, like... Oh, yeah. Like, when acting. when I first saw him as Saul in Breaking, da- in Breaking Bad, I was just, like... Oh no, not comedic relief. But then like But he's great at it. Yeah, it's a it's a great character in yeah. all that. But yeah, spin-offs are hard to land and I'm curious to see what happens with Stranger Things cuz like you know, there's all these theories going around. Everyone has them. Just like someone th- some people think that uh Eddie is going to get resurrected because technically every single thing in Stranger Things is literally just like stuff from Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. That the that's why it's named what it's named is because the kids just can't comprehend other things. <laughs> what are do you remember and I don't I know I don't what each of like each class the main like four played. You know, like was Dustin a bard was um like somebody was a wizard like Mike's like a wizard or something. Uh, I think I'm just he, trying to remember the painting that Will made. Right? I think Will was the wizard. Um, right, Will the Wise. Right, so that makes him like a wizard. And then Mike was... like, like a, a dungeon master. He's like a knight. Yeah. I don't, right, yeah, because he had like, the shield. That's like what his painting was, was like him yeah. being a knight or whatnot. And then I think Dustin is also like a knight, because like he was on a horse with a sword, but he didn't look, quite look like a bard, because they're usually a little weaker. Yeah. But... I don't know, but like there's this whole theory because in Dungeons and Dragons lore, um, there's a character called Ka- Cass or Kaz or whatever who is Vecna's right hand man, but then ends up betraying him. And so everyone thinks that it's going to be Eddie because there was um, Cass also turned half vampire at one point and Eddie got bit by bats. And so they thought that that was like a little, a little hint, not that they would turn. Eddie into a vampire. That makes my head hurt, but I probably you're probably right. I don't yeah. know D and D lore all that well. Me either. This is just stuff I've watched and seen because like D and D's fun, but I've never done it like deep in lore. We've right. always usually done like homebrews. Yeah, like haha, this ranger is gonna go and attack this group of goblins. Yeah, like I'm there. I'm Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, and with me is Chuck Norris, stuff like that. Uh, and I make my money playing songs to the masses. Exactly. But also at night, I'm a secret rogue. Yeah. I'm, assassin. Yeah, I'm secretly the best wizard that's ever been. I created wizardry. <laughs> I, I invented wizardry. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, overall, like, favorite season of Stranger Things. 
Yeah, great season. I didn't really, I don't, I don't really, didn't really like the landing in season four. I just, I really was happy to see everybody together mm-hmm. doing their, do their thing. Yeah. That was great. But I think literally the last five minutes are where I was just like, mm, okay. But the rest of it was great. Like when there was moments that felt high stakes, they did a good job. But then, of course, they kind of just like swept it under the rug and they're like, well, the stakes aren't as high as we thought. My boy Will needs like something. Yeah. So the Duffer brothers actually said that Will is going to be like, it's mainly like him season five. Like, thank God. And which I think is very fair because, I mean, he started it. Why not let him end it? Also, he started it, but he was like missing the entire season. Exactly. And so I think it'd be really cool if it like when, you know how he gets like that feeling and he grabs the back of his neck. Right. I think it'd be really cool if they did like a deeper dive Mm -hmm. and he accidentally like acquired some type of power similar to 11s, but not like, it doesn't have to be like moving stuff. He's got to be a key part to the next season, right? Yeah. Because he's already, he knows the Mind Flayer's mind. Yeah. And so he's got to have some sort of connection to Vecna in in some way. Yeah. And that's what, I mean, I don't know. That's what the Duffer brothers said. They said that they wouldn't give much more information, but they said Will will be like, the main person that you're following, like it's going to be his story. Great. And I'm here for it. That's and what hopefully we need. Hopefully a new freaking. And I guess I also heard that it's going to be like set further in time. Right. So it won't be like, I hope it doesn't pick up right where they left. They, off. It, I think they've already said it's not, it's going to be a few years down the road. I think good. Let the, let the kids be closer in age to their actual. Cause will and his haircut and his voice were not, he's we're not, not, we're not 14. No. <laughs> Just no. like, um, I mean, I mean, Gaten, the yeah. kid that plays Dustin, he's 20. Yeah. He's a year younger than me, and he was playing a 14-year-old. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's not the first time it's ever happened. Um, and you get away with it. It's but, just starting to get less believable now. Right. And the pandemic hurt. Like, yeah. that, that really threw things off. But I don't think you see a new Stranger Things until 2024. Yeah. They haven't even started filming yet. Hopefully, yeah, I hope they don't just pick up right as them looking at the sky. They won't. And it's like they a can't. middle-aged man saying, Mike, look... We're still 14, and Look the cloud's at my still bicycle. there. bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if they pushed it to the 90s, I think it'd be cool, but I don't think that. I think it's you're currently looking at late 80s, because what, what were you? They were in 86? Yeah, this season was 86. So you're probably looking at 89. Yeah. Maybe like three three, three years after the tragedy of Hawkins, and this is the how town's still rebuilding, rebuilding, right? And uh, <laughs> they're getting really ready to go to college, and, uh, <laughs> you know, something like that. It'd be know. really funny if you just see... Um, the community just embraced the portal. And so they had just had, they just had parts of Hawkins was in the upside down. And so people be like, I'm off to work in the mines yeah. and just dive in. <laughs> Mike's mom has built a garden like in the upside down. <laughs> you know, something along. Joyce is doing, she's telemarketing in the upside down now. Like, yeah. Hello. Uh, hi. Oh, your village is ran- was ravaged by a demogorgon. We can fix that. Here's a, your two by four with <laughs> ni- n- nails in it. Oh, man. Yeah, that'd be funny. Yeah, but overall... Great season. I really enjoyed yeah. it. I thoroughly, it was a different vibe. I thought it was great. Action all over the place. I like that it's scarier, and I like how it's becoming... I, which, it's weird. because Things it, are, in fact, stranger Yeah, this season. And I like that. Well, because, like, season two to me wasn't bad, but also it went by so fast that, like, I don't remember much about it. I get season two and three, like, blended all the time. Season... Two, that was the one where Elle kind of went rogue, right? Where she left and met like with her sister. Mm-hmm. Is that season two? Uh, yeah, that was a weird storyline. It almost seemed unnecessary. Yeah, just honestly. like, and then like I don't know where like they brought Max in, and Max was just like, "Hey, Elle, we're best friends now." Yeah, and whatnot. But the whole thing was weird. But no complaints. No, I, I, I haven't. I've liked every season, and this one I just think I really, really like because it was different. Yeah, we've gotten where we're at now. And we're all good. Yeah, let's finish. Let's finish the story. I'm ready for yeah. the, the end. Hell yeah! I mean, I'm sad for the end, but also I'm ready for it. Like yeah. usually, like I, I'll like, please keep this show on forever. Like this yeah. is great. Like Ted Lasso. Like I could like they could make us 400 seasons. I'd probably watch it just because it should feel good, right? <laughs> this story, I'm good. I need it to end. Yeah, you know, I'm ready. It, yeah, they've thrown so much at us. I need some of it to stick. Yeah, 100. percent Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this again. Thanks, buddy. Hey, YouTube, smash that subscribe button. Yeah.